All right, the camera's shaking because my hands are shaking so bad. You have to see this. It is 19 degrees in my car right now. And my drink, if you can see, I can't, there's liquid in here. It's frozen, it's frozen solid. It is so cold out. Yeah, so I don't think that clip will allow you to appreciate how cold it is here in the state of Maryland. When I got into the car five minutes ago, it was 19 degrees and now it is 13 degrees, which equates to negative 11 Celsius. It is so cold right now. And if you're somewhere else where it's much colder, I apologize. I don't know how you do it, but this is not characteristic of Maryland. On Tuesday, in fact, we got some snow and trying to be a planner, I knew if I didn't park my car in my garage, which I never do, I was gonna need to get up in the morning and clean my car off. Well, I had a case that I had to be at at 6.30, which meant I had to be on the road at 5.30. So planning ahead, I parked my car in my garage and wouldn't you know it, 5.15 I roll out to, to leave and get on the road and I can't get the garage door open. My garage door had frozen shut. Here's Nest video of me trying to get my garage door open at 5.15, 5.30 in the morning. It was terrible. So I've never had a garage door, so this whole thing with garage doors freezing shut is brand new to me. And now I know, and I will not make the mistake again, the car is not getting parked in the garage anymore. So it's Thursday, I'm sticking to my commitment of posts every Thursday, but it's gonna go up late, and I thought, you know, I kind of enjoyed the, the conversational piece of car talk, so we're gonna do another car talk Friday, and on today's car talk, we're talking about the secret recipe for having a successful channel on YouTube. So wipe the smirks off your face. I already know what you're thinking. How does somebody with only 228 subscribers have the magic recipe, the magic sauce, special sauce, special sauce, to growing a YouTube channel? And you're right, I do not have the magic bullet. But being a small creator and being somebody that watches other YouTubers, I do have some thoughts on what it takes to grow your channel, maybe not fast, but what it takes to grow your channel, and what it takes more importantly to sustain the subscribers you already have. And that's what we're gonna talk about, that's what we're gonna get into. But the lighting in here is terrible. I'm in a garage, it's dark, it's, I'm using my car light, it's, it's terrible. So I gotta get out into the sunlight but first I gotta go to a meeting. I know, I know. Three weeks into the new year and I've already missed my commitment to a Monday, Thursday post. Just yesterday got away from me. Didn't get out of that dinner till late. By the time I got home, it would have been too late to get anything edited and up. So I punted. Then you had a 5 a.m. alarm clock to get to the hospital by 5.30. Just too much too little time. We'll get it done today. And can you believe it? It's freezing and it's snowing. Oh joy. All right, enough talk. I'm getting through this. I'm shutting everything down. I have to finish this video. It's taking way too long. So what does it take to be a successful YouTuber? First of all, I have no idea. I have 228 subscribers. I'm, I'm interested in growing my page, but it's not for the goals of quitting my job and making it full time, as I've told you. But I definitely, as somebody that's putting content on there, watches my channel to see what gets interest, I definitely have some opinions on what it takes to build your channel. Now, one thing that I find interesting about watching YouTube, what, reading through comments is the brand. Everybody talks about the brand or Everybody has their own brand. Take Casey Neistat as an example. Casey's known for his sunglasses, his running, 
his his time lapse videos, his amazing storytelling. But as soon as you put sunglasses on, you're copying Casey Neistat. Then you have Peter McKinnon, and Peter, I think, has so much in his videos with his great cinematography, the way his slow motion. But as soon as you drink a cup of coffee, you're copying Peter McKinnon. Maybe you throw a little magic in there, Peter McKinnon. Then you have somebody that cracks me up, and that's Cody Warner. I mean. Cody's always jumping in and out of frame. He's high energy, positive outlook, and I just appreciate that about his videos, but the jumping in and out of frame, that has become kind of his brand. And I think it's these brands, young creators look to almost force their brand on you. They try to find something that they can make theirs. And for me, I think that brand comes naturally. I think over time, it's something that you do in your videos organically that becomes your brand. I don't think you need to force that brand on the people that are watching. And that's what I think is most important about growing your channel. Being genuine, being you, and being honest to who you are, and in turn being honest to who you are to your viewers. And I think that's the thing that makes your channel grow the quickest, is being relatable. When you look at all the successful YouTubers around you, I always say YouTubers weird, but when you look at those people around you, don't try to emulate what they're doing because that will come through in your videos that it's not genuine. And the most important thing is being genuine because if you're honest to yourself, it, it just, it makes you more honest to your viewers. So that's what my goal is and that's what I think it is but something else there's something else that I think is very important when you're just getting started or you're starting to just get flat with the pages this whole concept I heard from Sarah Dietschy rhymes with peachy you might have seen her she's her page is phenomenal but she goes under this premise of one for me one for you what this whole idea or thought process is is one video that I'm really passionate about goes up and one video that my users will want to see or something that's searchable. And I think this is, as soon as I heard this, it just, all the triggers started to go off in my brain because that's how I found Casey Neistat. That's how I got embedded into his channel was I was searching for a DJI Spark review and I stumbled on his page. And I just loved the content, loved the review, loved the storytelling. And then at the end of that, review there was a banner for his next video I watched that one and that the next one the next one just snowballed till I was like hooked on his channel and that's how I think this really gets going is you need something that's searchable you need something that's going to get them to your page but you also need to be putting up videos that you're passionate about that's maybe something unique to your storytelling or unique to why you're doing this whole YouTube thing for me it's the the nest doorbell and the tech stuff and the yoder stuff that's what's searchable that's what gets the most hits but hopefully the other videos the stuff that i'm interested in kind of putting out there are what keep people coming back and are what help grow the page and that's something that i'm getting better at and it's something it's the reason i do this so i love that thought process it's something that i've adopted into my page the one for me one for you kind of mentality but then the third, the biggest, the most important thing to creating a YouTube channel 